What's up, everybody? This is Jerome Flood the Second, and I am going to talk today about playing with a band. Uh, it could be any band. It could be a band that you're touring with. It could be a band at church. It could be a band at a restaurant gig. But I'm going to tell you some important things that I've learned about playing with bands and playing, you know, just playing all over. The first thing I want to talk about is eye contact. Like, you need to realize that when you're playing, you know, don't be looking down. You know, stop worrying about that girl with the big butt that looks good to you. Don't worry about that. Uh, you need to focus. You need to be locked in with the musicians because anything could happen. The artist could change the song. And you're stuck, still playing. Oops. Nah, you need to be locked. You need to be focused. Because it's just like, to me, playing with a band is like playing a sport. You got to be, you know, you got to be on the same page. You have to have eye contact. You got to be able to communicate. Like, when you're watching, like, I don't know, LeBron James, you see him pointing or you see him yelling at his teammate, y'all do this, do that. It's the same thing with us, man. It's just, you know, not as, you know, aggressive, but it's the same thing, man. We got to stay in contact. You got to watch the keyboard player. When I'm in church, I'm staring at the keyboard player the whole time I'm playing, like, because I'm waiting for him to tell me something. Even though we got, you know, like, talkbacks in our ears, sometimes they don't use them. So you got to still stare at them like, you know, just to make sure that you're on the same page. Uh, also, while playing with the band, you got to be able to talk to people without offending people. It's very hard. It can be very hard to do. And you may not think that you're being offensive. You may be like, that chord isn't right. You need to fix that chord. And the chord might be wrong. The keyboard player, the guitar player may have to fix the chord, you know? But the way you say it just kind of aff can offend people sometimes. So instead of saying, you need to fix that chord, that sounds terrible. Why would you do that? Can't you hear that? I don't even sound right. You got to be like, uh, why don't we try it this way or try it that way? You know, like, that's the way to get somebody to possibly change something without them getting their feelings hurt. You don't want to let them know that the, the chord was trash. But even if it was trash, you don't want to hurt their feelings. You just want to be like, ah, let's try this. Let's see what that sounds like. And then if everybody says it sounds better, then you move on. That's how I do it. I didn't used to do it that way. I used to be, yo, what is that? Why are you doing that? That don't sound right. Did it sound like that on the record? So why are you doing it? So I try to calm down from acting like that. I just try to be like, yeah, let's try another way. See what it sounds like. And then it, it usually sounds good when I say that. Another thing, I want you to be ahead of the game. When somebody gives you music to learn, don't sit there and wait and learn in rehearsal. Because once you're in rehearsal, you're supposed to be running through it. You're not supposed to be trying to learn it. You know, we all have done that before where we just didn't feel like learning the music ahead of time. And, and we're trying to learn it on the car ride or right before rehearsal starts inside the building you know just take time out of your day and even if you're not going to play just listen to it just listen to the music um because once you get it in your head mentally you know eventually it'll come out and you'll remember stuff and also when you're listening to music and it has lyrics you'll remember the lyrics a lot more because you're not you know focusing on the beat you're focusing on the lyrics and usually once you remember the lyrics to a song you pretty much got the song 
Like, you got the, you know, the arrangement of it. So, it could be like, oh, the verse is first, and the chorus, and another verse, and the chorus, and the bridge, and the verse, and the chorus, and and then a double chorus. Like, you'll only remember that because you're listening to the song, like, constantly. And you're just listening. You're not even playing. Or you might hear a specific word that triggers something that you like, and you'll never forget it. So you're in rehearsal, and the band skips a part. And you're like, no, 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 no. We got to go back. We got to do this part because that was my favorite part. So... That's, you know, a couple of things to think about right there. Oh, and one last thing. Uh, as a drummer, you should learn how to tune. It makes the world of a difference. Like, it makes everything easier in rehearsal. Like, you want your snare cracking. No, no matter the tone. You just want your stuff to sound right for whatever the gig is. Like... Let's say I'm playing an R&B gig. This setup would be perfect for an R&B or gospel gig. So, you know, you hear the, the higher pitch snare. Or the higher pitch toms. Everything sounds, you know, it sounds good. It sounds sharp and, you know, flat. I'm not talking musical terms. I'm just talking like tone pretty much. It's like a higher flat sound. You can still hear, you know, the tonality of it and like the actual note. But it's not like super ring. It's not a super ring and it's not super dead. So that's it. You know, that's uh, how you it depends on how you tune your drums. So. Uh, I have a lesson talking about tuning the drums, so you might just want to go back to that, or, you know, maybe you could just subscribe to the website. How about that? Uh, yeah, so those are like the keys to playing with the band. You got to know your music ahead of time. Got to be able to communicate properly, and you need to learn how to tune so everybody's happy. Because let me tell you something. If the bass player or guitar player was out of tune the whole rehearsal, I would just be frustrated and not even want to talk to them. Because I'm like, tune your guitar, bro. Tune it. We're trying to be perfect out here, man. Tune your guitar. You know? Like, I'm not having that, man. Like... You know, there's, I know I talked about communication, but if somebody's out of tune, you have to tell them, like, listen, uh, check your guitar, see if your guitar is all the way tuned, because, I don't know, something's clashing, it could be you, it could be the bass player, it could be the keyboard is malfunctioning, who knows, but we gotta check it, and people have said that to me about my drums before on stage, like, in a big arena, like, while we're in sound check, hey, uh, can you check your uh, floor tom? It sounds a little, and they're all in the huge speakers in the arena. Hey, uh, Flood, can you, uh, can you check your, your, your floor tom? Uh, I'm not sure if you tuned it right. Like, for real? <laughs> but, yeah, that's one thing that you have to think about, man. You got to think about tuning. You got to think about communication. And you got to think about eye contact. And learning your music. So, hope this helps.